bring the meeting to order. Are there any uh, changes or additions to the agenda as printed? No, I don't have any. Anybody else got any? No. Okay. Are maybe we out of here by eight. Maybe. Are we prepared to approve the meeting minutes of August 17th and August 24th? The August 24th meeting is, our, is the joint meeting? I don't know. Is that yes. correct? Yes, August 24th is the joint meeting. I wonder if, if those, you know, since it was a joint meeting, I would feel better if we had a joint meeting with the village trustees in case there's any difference in perception on that. So we have a, a unified version of gets adopted of those. I think you're, uh, you're right. The last time we had a joint meeting, we each approved different versions of the meeting or something like that. <clears throat> What's the board's pleasure? You prepared for the August 17th, which was our regular select board meeting. And yeah. Um, yeah, I'd actually, I would like to wait on the joint as well. I've been meaning to, I haven't had a chance to look at the video yet to kind of cross check a few things. So um, I, I would move that we approve the August 17th and wait on the 24th. Okay, we have a motion to approve the August 17th. Do we have a second? Second. Got a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, seeing five saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. And Rosemary, you're probably going to have to unmute him. Yeah, unmute her, Brian. I'm going to grab Rosemary while I'm doing that. So the message for the, uh, that I'm going to carry to the trustees is that we want to uh, approve these at a, at a future joint meeting. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't really make sense to me, but if that's how everyone else feels, that's fine. We've had plenty of joint meetings and we've done it this way. It seems like to have another meeting to approve the meeting minutes, we're always gonna be behind on those approved meeting minutes. But that, if that's just me, that's fine. I gotta agree with Matt. We've, we've done it on our own and it, the trustees have a problem, uh, they can get back to us on it, I guess. That's kind of how we've left it in the past, as I recall. But it don't make a difference. If they were approved, does anybody have any changes that they would? Well, I think Kyle did ask for a little bit more time on them. Yep. Um, an mm -hmm. alternative I could suggest to the trustees is if they don't have changes or know what their changes are, they could propose them and we could at our next meeting either take them up or not. So that it would be a little bit time consuming to go back and forth with each other, but it, it I don't know whether, whether that or a joint meeting is going to happen sooner. Yeah, I like what you suggested there, the first, first option you suggested, Brian. Okay. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Too. So I'll ask them that if they have changes to submit them to us and then we'll take it up at our next meeting so that Kyle, you have time to review anything you wanted to. Okay. Thank you. That sounds good to me. Okay. Okay. Rosemary. I haven't got much tonight. Um, the, um, just to sign the warrant, authorize Eric to sign that. And we have applied for the um, rec uh, land records grant for about $27,000. And we should hear by um, September 15th if we've been awarded that amount. That will take us back into the 1960s. Do you think we're pretty competitive? Yes. Good. Because they, um, Susan's been working on this and they sent an email to Susan that um, if we had any more we wanted to do, we could put an additional money into it. So I don't think there are a lot of towns have applied for the program.
program. Good. Yeah, take Excellent. advantage of it. What will that require of the staff if we get that rosemary? Is it going to take a lot of staff time? No, because we're going to, it's going to be hired out for our land records company. Nice. We're going to do all the indexing and scanning and stuff. Terrific. Good. It should all be done by December 31st. Okay. You got anything else? That's all that I had. What's the board's pleasure on the orders that need signing? Move that the chairman signs them. Second. Motion and a second for the chair to sign. Any discussion? All those in favor, saying for signing aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Um, Brian, you might as well get into your report. All right. Uh, First couple items should be pretty quick. Uh, let's see, the VLCT annual meeting is going to be coming up. Uh, that'll be an online meeting on September 30th. Uh, and we need to appoint a voting delegate. Um, this has been traditionally, Eric has taken this up. Uh, since it is an online meeting, this might be a good opportunity for any other board members who want to attend to attend. Um, you know, whether they're voting delegates or just uh, a visiting member. So, is, is there that, anybody I, willing to? I would certainly yield the uh, the job of a voting delegate if anybody would like to take that. When is it again, Brian? Sorry. Uh, Wednesday, September 30th, um, during the day. Usually 2 o'clock or something, isn't it? it it's... I would have to get into the schedule and I'm sorry, I don't have that prepared in advance, but it is traditionally after lunch. So it's about one or two o'clock. Uh, since this is online and they're not serving lunch together, it may have changed, but it, it is during the day, about an hour to two hours of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't, we don't have to do that tonight, right? We could do that. No, we actually can make that appointment at our next meeting and still have time to get it in before the... Uh... So why don't we just leave it, all you, uh, give it some thought. If anybody uh, going to be interested, you can sign up. If not, I'll do it. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, the next is a request for the town to participate in the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health Prize. Uh, we participated last year. Uh, if you recall, this is, uh, Dennis Promises played a central part in uh, this application. Um, that this is a, a prize that the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation gives out for uh, communities that have made uh, significant advancements in uh, community health issues. Um, and it's not a grant to do work, but it's a award for having accomplished something. Uh, last year we were kind of just getting started, but we still went ahead and applied and we, we didn't make it. Uh, so we're interested in applying again. Um, it takes fairly little of my time, but the town does need to be an active participant in this. We would actually receive the money, uh, $25,000 and not Jenna's promise. Uh, the, our discussion last year was that we would use that $25,000 on um, public works that would benefit uh, Jenna's promise. So uh, things like uh, improving the the road, you know, improving their access. We could do traffic studies if we needed a stoplight there or some something like that. What we talked about was, uh, they're actually asking about sidewalks, so we would have to consult with the village uh, if we were gonna go down that route. Um, but yeah, the, the money would be awarded to us for you know, a, a public works infrastructure project. And Jenna's promise 
partic uh, their participation in this is that they would like to, you know, they know that it would be a public works project and not, we couldn't just gift them the money, but a public works project that they would have some input in, uh, you know, in kind of prioritizing for that money. And that was 25K? Yes. Okay. So Brian, with this specific um, award, so when we apply for it, we would it it would have to go specifically to to us. That would then specifically go to infrastructure to um, benefit Jenna's promise, or could it also go to other? It could go anywhere. The the award is made to the town of Johnson. I see. We're the eligible body that can apply for it. Mm -hmm. But we've received, uh, and we would, if we do apply for this, we will be receiving a significant amount of support and help from Jenna's Promise to complete the application and uh, be kind of the, the, you know, that, that they are our center for, they're doing a lot of the, the work that we're touting as, a, as public health. Okay, so then so, they would, okay, that answers that question. So then they, okay, so, so they would be proposing their, so what's the, I guess what's the public health plan piece? Uh, so the, the public health part of it is that what we're saying is that Jenna's promise has a positive impact on public health in Johnson, that their commitment to, uh, helping people afford to stay in care facilities, which is a lot of what they're doing right now. Uh, they're starting up a new mother's program that they're running out of Jenna's home. Um, and they're serving as the meeting place right now for uh, Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous and other support groups. And we're saying that that is a public health good. And you know, that, that, that commitment, we've done some of that before, but we're doing, we think, a, a better job of it now, and we're able to keep building on what we're doing, um, especially with the access to recovery services that uh, Jenna's Promise has done a lot of work for uh, community members okay. you know, to, to receive greater access. Again, you... this award, it's it's by agreement that we would use it in something that su would support Jenna's promise. The Jenna's promise, the award is to the town, but Jenna's promise is participating in our, in our application and they're doing most of the work for the application. Uh, and is it Jenna's promise that makes us competitive in getting that grant? Yes. Potentially? Okay. Is there any part of Cheslov's you know, hopefully coming into Johnson at, at that site on St. John Street that uh, could benefit from this as well, as well as the, uh, the structure. That's the there. idea about uh, improving sidewalks and, you know, possibly the intersection or the roadway in general would be that we're hoping that something like Cheslov and the, the Jenna's home in general will have more traffic and we'll be able to uh, uh, impact more people if it has the capacity to have more traffic. So last time I, I talked to Dawn, actually, I believe, she told me that Cheslev was no longer a part of Jenna's promise or the, or the, uh, the, the health clinic part, like that kind of fell through. So I guess I, I'm just wondering what the, I guess I'm, I mean, you're, you're saying, and I, and I ask this respectfully, Brian, you're saying that, you know, they're doing this, doing that. But again, that kind of gets back to the question I asked at the last meeting was where I have, I haven't, and I guess to you, Eric, like I haven't seen anything in writing that, so I don't know, you know, like it sounds like a few people know, but I don't know exactly what all this work that they're doing is to our, for our community. I haven't actually seen it in writing yet. 
Nat? Yeah, it, we, um, earlier this, well, it wasn't earlier this summer, it must have been over the winter, we did have a public hearing um, on Jenna's promise before we um, applied with them for a grant that they later received. So that there was a pretty robust discussion about robust Jenna's promise and, and the plans and, and things that were happening at that time. I, I um, don't kind of want to make every meeting kind of be about that, re that um, and more public meetings about about that. I mean, the, the, the thing is there, this, this particular thing is, is $25,000 of basically free money for public infrastructure that we own, that we're responsible for maintaining and upgrading anyway. Um, we, would, we would have to spend $25,000 um, to, to keep our infrastructure going, only it would be taxed, um, it would be paid for by the citizens of Johnson. So to me, this seems like uh, uh, quite a, a, a good thing. Yeah, and I'm not necessarily, that, that's not what I'm arguing, arguing about or, or uh, pushing back against. I just, I, I, I'm just wondering where this document lives for us to revisit, look, like, is it being updated? You know, because I know that there has been a lot of changes, like I'm pretty sure this community um, clinic, that was an idea, but now I think it's off the table. So things are changing and evolving, and I just want to keep up with what those changes are so I know what we are supporting exactly. The community clinic may have changed. I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm not up to speed enough to really have a comment on, on that. Um, but what I, the, the, I guess the best thing that I can probably do is share the application with you. Uh, we do need to apply for it uh, before our next meeting, I believe is, is the due date. So we do need to make a decision on it today. Uh, but the, uh, we will be writing an essay on our accomplishments. Uh, or I should say on Jenna's promise accompli accomplishments mostly. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it's really just kind of by agreement that we're saying that the money should be used on something that Jenna's promise supports. It's not that it's a hard and fast requirement exactly. It's just that we'd be getting the money based on work that they've done as kind of our, our leading, right now our, our leading, uh, not healthcare provider, but our, 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 our biggest impact on community health uh, right now is Jenna's promise, even without the um, the support of the healthcare clinic, uh, the, the work that they're doing with, um, you know, with recovery and with housing, it's kind of there. It will be a better application next year, uh, because we'll have accomplished more at that point. Okay. Uh, and more things will be settled. Uh, but to our knowledge, uh, this is something that we, discussing this with uh, the state health department uh, and Jenna's promise uh, last year, uh, uh, Lamoille, Healthy Lamoille Valley was involved with us. They, we've only had one meeting about applying this year or not. So uh, Healthy Lamoille Valley wasn't able to make that meeting, but we'll reach out to them. Um, it was just a Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, yeah, the, the it's just by agreement that we want to use the money on something that Jenna's promise is involved in. Uh, there's no requirement there. It's just they're going to help us get the money, so we should use it. It feels like the uh, kind of reciprocal thing for us to use it on something that they're interested in. But if it's not a we, – we can't use – public money on something that isn't a public good. So if it's not something that's generally supported by the community, right. we're not gonna be able to do it. Right, so, so, so my beef is that, is that 
not saying that they're not doing good work. I just want to know what the work is. So I just want clarity on that. Um, and, and the second thing is that it feels like we're, we are getting more married, which might be a good thing. Again, I just don't know what that is. And even you, Brian, have said several times, we, like we're yep. one, like Jenna's promise in the town are one thing. And maybe that's a good thing, but I, my, my hesitation there is that we should keep public and private separate. We have our own identities, it, but if we're going to be helping each other and signing off on things, we need to know exactly what we're signing off on, you know, because, um, and again, I say this all respectfully, I'm not, but I just think it's, nobody can answer any of my questions about exactly what we're supporting. So that, that, that gives me pause. Um, and puts up a few red flags. We, we have to determine tonight if we're going to support this or not, but I would extend an invitation for Greg to come in and give us an update on Jenna's promise. I know he's online. If he nods his head that he would be willing to, we could do that at a future meeting. Yeah, again, it feels like it's putting the cart before the course, you know, it's like, I, I wanted that information before voting on what we're signing off on, but that's, that's me. So that's why I can't, I can't support just signing off rubber stamping everything. Cause I just, I just want to know. I just want to know. I think we should. I think that's the right thing to do. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? I move that we uh, apply for the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation culture uh, health prize. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Doug, were you going to say something? Well, I was going to move that also. I, I think that uh, to the extent that there have been uh, grant applications that we've been a participant in with uh, the uh, with Jenna's promise, I, I believe that we can say we on some of these, certainly on some of these things. Um, Are you done? I am. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we've, it, it reminds me of um, things we've done along with, with Laraway um, in applying for money and, and getting um, CBD money, um, CBDG, whatever, um, or the Sterling Market. Um, and I know that um, Jenna's Promise is a nonprofit and they operate under open meeting laws and, and that the Tetros are are very approachable. Their their numbers are in the phone book. Um, so, um, I, yeah, and yeah, and in that I I I I and that's don't that's not what I'm saying that they're not good people, not doing good things. I just said I I, well, I just well, would well, like to see I something in that writing, that. and that's it. I didn't say and that. I believe the VSC that. has always shown us something in writing. Laraway has always showed us a plan. So that's that's all I'm asking for. That's all I'm asking. Okay. For. I, I didn't I didn't accuse you of calling Tatra's Tetra, bad people. I, I I did not say that at all. Okay. No, I'm saying that that's not my my beef with with what I'm talking about. Is there any more comments? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. So we have to do a roll call. Yep. Yeah. Nat, how do you vote? Aye. Doug, how do you vote? Aye. Kyle, how do you vote? Nay. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. The ayes have it. Okay. Uh, resignation and appointment on the Intermunicipal Law Enforcement Study Group. Right. And Greg's not going to be able to serve, and I believe you checked with Duncan and he's still available and would like to. Yes. yes. So we had three applicants uh, that applied for this. We appointed uh, Diane as one of them. What's the board's pleasure on uh, Greg's resignation? Do we accept it? And do we want to appoint Doug, uh, Duncan? Motion to resignation and appoint uh, Duncan Hastings. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any more discussion? Doug, did you have something? 
Uh, I just didn't want to be on the committee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor, same five saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? And you'll send a congratulatory letter to uh, Duncan, I'm sure. I will. Uh, discussion of the mission uh, soliciting volunteers for the Racial Justice Committee. Yep. So we've, I circulated uh, two documents. <clears throat> the first one uh, I want to get into is our, let's see, our resolution on um, the creation of the uh, joint committee with the town and village. Um, so on that resolution, uh, why don't I go ahead and share my screen so everybody can read it. It's in your packet, but you know, we'll go ahead and put it up here as well. Okay, everybody can see that? Yep. All right. So uh, the main change to this was uh, during our discussion, um, we had a conversation about the bullet points. Um, I have added one bullet point from the one we saw at the meeting. Uh, to and I have added. Uh, it used to read uh, racial issues of racial justice, uh, and I, I've changed that to read racial and social justice. So I believe that that reflects the sentiment that was at the meeting, uh, and it's the one, two, three, fourth bullet point that I added. Has everyone had the opportunity of seeing the village's uh, solicitation for volunteer uh, candidates? They sent it out in their newsletter. No, I didn't see it. No. Okay, it's. Uh, I mean, they've already sent one out. It's much more simpler than and not as wordy as this. Basically, just saying that they're looking for uh, volunteers and or candidates. And there's three for the town, three to the, for the village. And it indicates here, if you're not a uh, village resident, to contact you, Brian. So I mean, we could probably just copy what they have and send that and post that as well. Then we'd be consistent with what the village has already done. Wait a minute. The village has already sent out something. Soliciting for candidates, yes. And why did they feel like that was okay? <laughs> this is a joint committee and we should be all on the same, completely we, on the same page. We were both left that meeting charged with getting candidates and neither one of us was gonna be directing the other one on how they solicit their candidates. <sighs> this feels very backdoor, <laughs> I can't, Okay, I'm, I'm very, can we, can we see the wording? Can someone pull that up, Brian? <sighs> uh, Eric, can you send me a copy? Uh, it's, it's hard copy. It came in the mail with their electric bill, I guess. All right, let me, give me a second. I'm gonna stop the screen share. I'm gonna go into my personal email and Check my electric bill. <clears throat> just came today, by the way, in the mail. I mean, literally just came a few hours ago. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
Eric, have we ever had a joint committee like this before? I'm drawing a blank. Um, not that I recall. We've had joint committees, but they were usually, you know, board members that served for some purpose. We, you know, had to do something. But as far as each uh, soliciting uh, residents, no, I don't recall it. And Eric, you had no idea that this was happening on the village, so that they were going to be sending something out before we even got a chance to? No, I just, like I said, I, uh, Glenda saw it when she opened up the electric bill, and it's in their new village newsletter that they send out, I don't know, every quarter or whatever. So you're saying we're both charged with writing completely our own mission statements, our own guidelines for the same committee? They, they didn't get into that level of detail for, for what just getting candidates. It's, it's very, if you can't find it, Brian, I can read it. No, I'm sorry, I can't find it. Okay. it I, yeah. Uh, if you could read it, please. Okay. Members sought for Johnson Racial Justice Committee. The Village of Johnson Board of Trustees and the Town of Johnson Select Board have voted to form a Racial Justice Committee for Johnson. Each board will appoint three members to the committee. Therefore, the Village is seeking letters of interest from Village residents who would like to be considered for an appointment to the committee. If you would like to be considered for one of the three committee appointments by the Village Trustees, Please submit a letter of interest to Meredith Dolan, village manager, via email at her email address or by <clears throat> the mail to the, post, uh, to the town clerk's office or by using the drop box at the municipal office by Friday, October 2nd, 2020. Please make sure to include your contact info in your letter. If you are not a village resident but are a town of Johnson resident interested in the committee, Please contact the town administrator, Brian Story, via email and leaves Brian's email address. And that's, that's it. So basically they wrote that on behalf of the village and town. Well, they did it on behalf of the village, but because some of their rate payers live outside of the village, they uh, indicated for those folks that you would have to contact Brian if you're interested. Okay, I don't want to get into what other people have to say, but I, I'm fine that really appalling. <laughs> I mean, I thought we were going to go ahead and we were not going to be checking in with the trustees on what we wrote. Um, I wouldn't have expected them to check in with us. It's their appointments, just like we will have our appointments. Right, but I think it's very important that we're, we're, that we're, that the mission is very clear. I, I just, I can't, yeah, I'm, I, 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 I'm very taken aback. I, I did, I, and I guess I assumed, which was not correct, um, that we would be, that we would be completely on the same page with the wording that we're using. But I'll let other people speak before I speak again. <laughs> Anyone else? I don't find anything particularly troubling in what the village said. Um, they're just looking for members. What did you find upsetting about it, Kyle? Oh, I just, I mean, in the draft that we were working on, it was, it was, it was very specific about the, about the volunteer criteria that you're, you know, committed to racial justice and, 
racial and social justice. And I was going to add even be able to demonstrate that you're committed towards racial justice. I had sent that to Brian weeks ago. Um, you know, that we were, we get a little bit more specific with the criteria because we, like I keep saying, want to be sure that people that are on this committee are actively engaged uh, with, with, you know, the mission. So this keeping it so vague could be very interpreted in really different ways. That could do more harm than good, I think, on a committee like this. <clears throat> on page nine of, of the minutes that we are that we're discussed earlier, uh, the minutes of August twenty fourth, there was uh, um, we. Um, Kyle and I voted against uh, the select board motion for, for the committee name. And then we went on and there was discussion and uh, um, the, about uh, basically the mission. And uh, we talked about uh, Brian um, stories, points were brought up and we talked about adding to the mission statement, the racial uh, justice and social justice, I thought, um, and uh, there was consensus on that. So uh, I, I agree with Kyle that uh, you know we have a title, and then we have a mission statement. And so I thought that uh, they would put that out. Now maybe they, being the trustees, would you know put some information in saying you know this is what we see the mission as uh, the. I don't, uh, you know, maybe they're going to evaluate it based on, on the mission, but I, I think it would be fair to to say that this is what the, the direction the, the trustees uh, are by consensus have, have sought for that. Um, you know, maybe they'll evaluate it, like I said, based on that. But, you know, I, and, and one of the reasons I wanted to wait on the, on the minutes was that I, I wanted the, uh, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I, I was pleased to wait on the minutes because I, I wanted to have the mission statement in front of them to provide them with direction. And especially when we select. So, but they've done this and uh, uh, they're more expeditious and, and we're more careful. And I don't know which is the better, but I have an idea. If not, anybody, either one of you have something you want to add? <clears throat> not really, no. Okay. Brian, uh, unless the board wants to take action on this now with some kind of a motion, is the board prepared to open it up to the public? Or will that help us? I'd like if we can focus the discussion around the mission statement. Um, like Doug has said, I'd really like to have that settled before we get into uh, worrying about appointing members to the committee. Uh, so yes. if, if with the, if the board is willing, I'd kind of like to take them as two steps. So we've got the mission statement in front of us. And then if we're okay with that in principle, then we can get into seeking volunteers. Is the board comfortable with the mission statement as Brian has presented? I, I wouldn't feel terribly comfortable amending it too terribly much without the trustees. Um, that that's the meeting that we had, that there was more or less consensus around that. So making tremendous changes or significant changes to it, I think even minor changes would sort of not be in the spirit of, of uh, working with the village. Is this now, Brian, what was a, uh, discussed at and conceptually agreed between the board, uh, the select board and the trustees? I believe so. Okay. Um, what I would recommend that we do with this 
would be uh, if we're satisfied with it to give it to the village for their next meeting. We could approve it conditional on their on their approval, uh, or we could just present it to them as our, you know, best drafts. Uh, but with if we've got a pretty good idea, I don't. I think I'd be comfortable starting to solicit uh, volunteers for this. Um, you know that I don't think it's going to change too much. Uh, because again, in in my own opinion, I think this is pretty much what we agreed to at the meeting. Does the rest of the board feel comfortable with that? I do. I, I personally would like to um, have where we where we say oh shoot I can't scroll um, where we say at the can you scroll all the way to the top Brian Yep Thanks um, So again th this is not the call for volunteers No right I know but I think it's very important that we actually write out where we say have adopted an inclusivity statement. I would like to see that fully written out and again the anti-racism statement fully written out because you know I just think it's really good to have that language there so when people are are reading it they 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 see exactly what we've you know um, what we stand by and support and tolerate and do not tolerate. So that I think that those two are two statements that we've already passed and are in in here need to be fully written out, and then um, um, yeah, and then I think the rest I I liked as is. Let me just read it one more time. Um, So those, that, that's my two. So it's not, it's, it's just, um, um, well, I lost the word, but you, you know, uh, uh, completely, literally spelling out our two statements. Okay. Oh, I, I think that's fine. That doesn't, I, I don't think that that, I think that makes it a little bit clearer, but I don't think it's a material change. So I imagine that the trustees would uh, would probably not object to that. Mm -hmm. You could you could put an asterisk on inclusivity inclusivity statement and see attached. You know, you, you can reference it. You know, inclusive. Then they can read it and say, "This is what that says." The anti-racism. Is there a separate statement on that? We did make a separate statement on that. All right, then, yeah. then, then we should do the same. Uh, I agree with Doug. Why? Why not? Why that not? Way, that way you just leave it the way it is <laughs> without adding a bunch of stuff to it and I just put a reference to it. A bunch of stuff is super important that people read right there. Well, why there. wasn't this discussed last meeting? Because we've been, we're tweaking it. Well, we've been <laughs> tweaking it. I think it's tweaked enough and I think we ought to go forward the way it's written with Doug's suggestion. I, I'm, I'm suggesting that it come as an attachment, you know, that it not be inserted in, you know, it's simpler, but they can reference it, you know, it, it, it'll be the pages be up all week. Yeah, Good, let's do that. Okay, so, I'm hearing a majority consensus on adding the addendums for the inclusivity statement and anti-racism statements. Okay. Um, and then we can throw this over to the uh, trustees, get their blessing. And now we got something to go by if we uh, solicit candidates, we can share with them 
what the expectations of the committee are. I think it's important to have, I like the idea of uh, we're saying we'll approve it conditional upon their approval. I think their approval is important in order to, in order to hopefully have them have something that they can say to their, their applicants, this is what the mission is, you know? We're trying to backdoor, you know, or bring in the mission statement that I think should have been included with the trustees. Brian, do those, does the uh, trustees meet before they interview their candidates? I'm not sure what their, their plan or their schedule is. Not enough to uh, really offer any, any comment on that. Um, they've got a meeting coming up next week. Okay, so then, then if we put this before them, they could have an opportunity to review it before they're, because they, I think they're looking for candidates to have their letters of interest by October 2nd. Okay, so yeah, they'll have an, a board meeting in between. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, and I, Brian, if there's any way you can communicate how important it is that we're on the same page about all of this, please express that because this is just, this is just, this is, this is, um, we're already shooting ourselves in the foot here if we're, if we're not being clear about the criteria and we're getting three, in three very, you know, six very people coming with very different ideas. I think that, you know, um, I think that's, that's just cause it, that's, we're asking for for um, yeah, for for to be a very unproductive um, in terms of doing what we're asking here. So I'll 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 share yeah. this with them and and you know yeah communicate our, our belief that the, this is the our best take on the shared. Uh, mission as discussed at the meeting. Yeah, and maybe uh, even know, we, quote. We chose not to yeah. vote on it because we were, you know, we had some uh, language that we wanted to refine. Um, but I believe that the content of this was pretty well uh, in agreement by, by both boards. Yeah. I think I'd be happy to make a motion that we approve this statement that's on the screen with the two asterisks for the addendums, uh, for the attachments, uh, and say that our approval is conditional upon their approval of the same. Second. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote no because I really think it's important. It's in the body of the text. Those 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 statements. So that's that's my feeling there. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And I'll have to do a roll call vote. Nat, how do you vote? Yes. Doug, how do you vote? Aye. Kyle, how do you vote? Nay. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. The ayes carry. So we'll put that over before the trustees. And I believe from the timing of meetings, they have a meeting maybe next week. We're the following week with our regular meeting. So we wouldn't have to put anything out for candidates until our next meeting, unless the board's prepared to take that up tonight. Uh, so, sorry, Eric, say that again. My head was still on the last vote. <laughs> well, we're throwing this over to the trustees for their review. They meet next week. We have a meeting the following week. We would know then if they bless this or not, and we could then solicit for candidates. Or oh. if the, board, the board's prepared, we could solicit for candidates starting tonight. Ask Brian to put out the word. Okay. It was my understanding we were going to also look at that and potentially tweak that language. 
What's I, wrong with this language? I, well, I, I, the reason why we're still talking about it, I thought, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, is because when he sent us the copy via email, I had a few changes I wanted to make. I thought he said other members did too, which is why we had to talk yep. about it at this meeting. And then between that, um, a member of the public sent us another example of what Hardwick is doing, um, which I thought was fantastic and should also be considered. That's my understanding. Okay. What's the rest of the board members' thoughts? I think that we should wait till the trustees have acted on it. I'd love to have a mission statement that was agreed upon uh, that we could be, that they could interview based upon and we could uh, send out for applicants. And uh, I think that our inclusivity statement is what it is and our anti-racism statement is what it is. And, and we don't have to, wordsmith the Hardwick stuff into it. I agree to that. I'm, I'm comfortable uh, soliciting for candidates at any point using the village's uh, language. I think it's good to mirror that, that language. No, I, 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 I disagree. Why can't we, why can't we Why can't we be the proactive ones with with we're you know getting the the um, soliciting candidates language the way we want it and then punching that to the trustees with the mission statement? I don't understand why we're didn't we vote on that that that's what we would do on the mission statement? Yes, the but village the has already. Uh, gotten out ahead of us on soliciting candidates. Mm -hmm. So I, something that I thought was really important here was that we, um, which I had sent to Brian, which is why I thought we were having this discussion, um, because it's a change in the language, is that the first bullet point, a commitment to racial and social justice, I thought we should say, be able to demonstrate a commitment to racial and uh, social justice. So not just say you're committed, but actually be able to express trainings you've taken, books you've read, activism work you've been involved with, other committees that do work like this you've been involved with. I think it's really important that there's some sort of uh, demonstration of your commitment. I suspect that on, on the board, there's a disagreement on whether or not that is a, is a necessary uh, distinction or requirement for being on this. There's been a, a kind of a running discussion all along uh, about how this committee would work. And uh, I was concerned about adding social justice to it because I thought it, 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 it took away from the racial aspect of it. But uh, there it is. And that's clearly what our minutes were. So uh, um, I, I I'm, I'm don't think that, uh, well, I, I, we voted on, on the mission statement. You know, and I think that's a done deal. No, I know. I'm talking about the soliciting. Well, what I'm, as far as soliciting is concerned, my position would be that we should wait to solicit until uh, after we have a response from the trustees. That's just my position. Nat, Nat says, go ahead. It's, it's okay with Nat, as far as uh, to, as I understand it, to use the, the statement uh, of the, uh, that the trustees used. Yeah, I feel like, Doug, if we wait, then we're just gonna keep kicking it back and forth and we won't ever have a committee. And, and I, that seems like a waste. Yeah, I understand and that. You know, I can Thank understand you, that worry. But Brian, isn't it true that you sent this out? You asked for input. Yes. I gave input. I thought that 
you said there was other input, so we should discuss it at the next meeting. Is that, am I making that up or? No, uh, specifically there was more about the mission statement than about the uh, call for volunteers. But my feeling on that was that I did my best to try and capture what we had discussed in the last meeting. If the feeling was that that, that didn't capture it, that we had to have that discussion in public uh, at a meeting. So that, that's why I, I had said, this is the draft I'm working on, but I, I, can't, I can't take a back and forth kind of feedback uh, by email because we have to be able to justify our reasoning in public. So I did my, my best interpretation on this. The only comment that I'd received specifically on, the, on this was, was yours. Um, no, I, I was taking them together as kind of one <clears throat> whole, even though now I'm saying I wanna keep them separate in terms of votes, I had taken them as one whole, I've captured everything from the meeting and we can move forward or we think it needs a little bit more, a, a closer look. And if any part of it needs a closer look, we've got to do that publicly. Um, I, and I, that, I had asked uh, Brian to, to go ahead and do this and put it together. And, and if there was uh, no objections from any board members to go ahead and, and start soliciting for candidates. Uh, however, if, if even one board member uh, expressed concerns with some of the wording or what have, what have what he had put together, then we would wait for a meeting. So okay. yes, if only one person did uh, have any concerns, then we would wait for this meeting. Okay, so that was me. Here we are, and now I'm being told that we can't, we shouldn't amend, that we can't amend, that uh, I guess I'm just feeling very stonewalled here. And um, why does my, so why, <laughs> I'm feeling super frustrated because this is how dominant culture continues. Like when you just stonewall and ghost somebody who's pushing up against the status quo. And this is very frustrating. I'm not saying you have to vote the way I'm voting. I'm just saying when I speak up, I want to be, I want to be heard. When I email back, I want to be heard. This is like, I don't understand what's going on with this board. It's really, it's very concerning. and. Um, so anyway, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, Kyle, I'm not understanding where you're coming from. <laughs> of course you don't, Eric, because you are, you are who you are and I am who I am. So of course you don't understand. Okay. Anyone else? We do have a member of the public who'd like to speak. Yeah, why don't we turn it over to the public? All right, Rick, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Okay. Um, I, I put what I was going to say in the chat. Um, my concern is that you had this meeting, you had everybody in the room. You, you even drafted a statement that says, be it resolved resolved that means you solved the problem town of johnson select board and village of johnson trustees that's an agreement you need the same language i get that this thing is going to take a life of its own and you know what i'll be honest with you this is uh, the kind of stuff that makes people really upset this is kind of stuff that see that that when people say there's division in the community how can you be resolved on a matter like this and then read a document from the trustees? When did the trustees actually meet to draft that document? That would have taken a public meeting. There hasn't been a public meeting. Where did this document come from? I, I haven't even seen my electric bill yet. Um, and I haven't heard anything about that the trustees are looking for candidates. Um, this is... Um, it's taking on a life of its own. And I asked for leadership and we had all of the, the elected officials in the room. 
you guys, you wouldn't support the trustee's decision to fly the flag? I get that. It didn't even get a second. You didn't even discuss it or debate it. You didn't take it seriously. And I get Kyle's frustration. I've been there. I've been that person that Kyle is being right now. When I spoke to the board, and it was two people against me. Well, we got that straightened out because that wasn't the right thing. And I think that you really need to get something that is resolved and is agreed upon by both boards because if this is the solution to the problem, you're creating more problems and, and not dealing with the solution. And boy, I, I'm, I'm not as upset as Kyle is over this. The, 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 the back and forth, the, the politicizing of this, as opposed to just doing, have the moral and the municipal authority to stop this. Gordy said, when will it end? It will end when you stop making it political and treat this as a human rights matter and deal with it. But all of this back and forth is really upsetting. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. I'd just like to make a note, if I may. Go ahead, Nat. That we voted, this board has voted to raise that flag on twice and we've We've, there, we've taken two votes on it previous to you asking us to take it again. And just to, we, unfortunately that failed, but just to take the same vote over and over and over again isn't gonna, isn't gonna change things. No, I, I, I get that. I get that. What I asked for was to support the trustees decision so that you could show the community that this isn't too boards that don't agree with each other. I, I sat at the meeting when, when you had the merger study and you had the person come in. The town people were on one side of the building, the village people were on the other side of the building. And it was really, how to say it, this is the kind of stuff that people are really upset about in the community. And this is what people are talking about. And what they want is they want some sign of unity within the community. You can't spell the word community without unity. And, and I, guess, I guess maybe I'm looking for leadership in the wrong place, but, but you're the people that are elected and you take an oath to uphold justice. I actually read you the oath and yet you've got to form a committee to decide what racial justice is. Come on, guys, do your job. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I, just I, like I need to unmute. Again, I'd just like to say again, you, you asked us to, to take a vote on something that we voted on, on twice previously, and I, I, don't, I don't see that that's fruitful. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rick. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that would? like to speak? Uh, I got asked to read some of the public comments. Can you just let them speak? Uh, I'm not seeing any volunteers stepping forward to, to speak on that. Uh, so let's see. Let me just summarize them. If you can, I don't want to go through all of them. So uh, comments the, about our joint meeting and what kind of volunteers would be sought. Um, let's see. Uh, supporting criteria that we should use the same language. Um, yeah, a couple comments along that line. Uh, asking if we had read the Hardwick uh, statement. I, I did. Uh, I'm going to mute you again, Rick. Uh, if you do want to speak again, just let me know and, and I'll unmute you. Um, Ryan, 
Brian, I'm, I'm sorry, Eric, I'm gonna, I'm going to push up against that again. I, I would like all the public comments read verbatim. It takes just as long for Brian to try to figure out how to summarize them. It's not a lot. And I think it's very important for public to be reflected in the minutes. How about if instead of reading verbatim every chat, we open up the, uh, let everyone who would like to speak, speak. Because they're writing, okay, I, I, this could be done by now if you just read them. I, I don't understand. Well, I think Brian pretty much did go through most of them. Oh, he didn't. Oh my God. There's no one that would like to speak in the public, Brian? I saw that Jackie wanted to speak. Jackie, okay. I will call on Jackie then. Okay, Jackie, you'll have to unmute yourself. Thank you, Brian. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um, wow, guys. Um, I, I know that this is difficult work, but this is just extra, extra sloppy. Um, it's hard, um, Eric, to speak now when we've all spoken in the chat because we were speaking in real time and our um, contributions were about what we were speaking at at that very moment. So it's, so it's hard to go back. Um, I, I agree with Kyle. It takes a second to read them. There weren't that many. Um, additionally, um, I, I just want to acknowledge um, Kyle Noose. Kyle, I, I just want to say thank you for your leadership. Um, I want to say what I'm witnessing here at this meeting and what I've witnessed at other meetings is some serious gaslighting. Uh, you are not crazy uh, when, when you say things and the rest of the board members um, just sort of look at you mute and no one, no one. At, I mean, she just had a really kind of an emotional, she really kind of bared it out. She laid it out and everyone pretended that they didn't understand or just left her hanging out there. You are a board. This is sloppy. You guys have some work to do. This is disheartening. As Rick said, the, the, this leadership, there, there's some things going on here and I don't, I don't have the answers for you, but I want to say uh, that I'm bearing witness here and we all are. And this, uh, this, isn't, uh, this isn't great work, folks. Um, whatever I can do to help support, I want to do. Um, but uh, I'm losing my train of thought because, uh, because again, we're, we're, out of, we're out of sequence here. And so uh, we've got to work on this process a bit. Thank you all. I, I know this is difficult. Thank you, Jackie. Is there anyone else, Brian? I don't see anybody else from the public. Um, I'm going to go through the comments uh, and okay. I'll finish up with the, the comments. Uh, I think I, I left off. Margo Warden has asked if we had read the, the Hardwick Select Board uh, statement. Uh, Walter Pomeroy has asked, uh, has referenced the meeting minutes that. Uh, the select board appoints three, the trust, trustees appoint three, and both votes were unanimous. Uh, Greg had a comment about something else. Cal uh, had, had asked that we read the chat publicly. Uh, Rick reminds us that the resolution states be it resolved that the town of Johnson select board and the village of Johnson trustees, uh, and uh, he feels that means that both boards should use the same language. And co Scott comments that the village was asked to read each chat and did. I believe I captured everybody's message from chat uh, and Beth Foy has her hand raised. Okay. All right, Beth, you'll have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, go ahead, Beth. Um, I just want to just chime in. I wasn't going to speak, but I can't help myself. Um, I would just like to say, Kyle, 
I understand all the feelings you feel. I have been there and I understand that it's really hard to be in a group of frankly white men, which is part of the reason for the committee in the first place, right? Um, I also would just like to say though, I think that everyone has a very different lens, um, very different perspectives, very different biases, um, because as you mentioned, we all come from different places um, and it really sucks to feel like you're the other, uh, quote unquote, again, reason for the committee. Um, but I do want to point out something that is equally as important, and that is respecting everyone. Um, you know, what Rick said about division within our community, I strongly agree with him. I think that there is too, ma too much, um, well, frankly, it's disrespect. I think we don't respect each other. We have to respect that somebody has biases and we have to be willing to hear them even if we don't agree with them and at least you know be a fellow community member hear them out like don't shut them down it doesn't mean they're going to agree it doesn't mean they're going to respond but it does but like there's a little bit of disrespect that has been happening over the past few months and um it's not cool, like it, it really has to end. And it's a lot of the right intention, right? People have all the right, it's for the right reasons. It's just delivered in a very wrong way. Um, I talk to a lot of people on this board. Um, you know, I connect with all of these people on this board and everyone's feeling that I would argue, uh, at least everyone I talk to, um, and that's not really fair. Like, we should be willing to hear each other. We should be working for what's best for Johnson, what's best for our community. And it shouldn't be us against them. That's not like, you know, that feeling we all felt when we were up holding signs for NVU? Like, we should be feeling that and we should be working together and hearing each other out, even if it's opposing views, even if it's opposing political um political views or social views or biases or whatever it doesn't matter like we have to respect each other we have to live together we live in the same small community if we're not listening to each other then we're never going to move forward if somebody doesn't agree with you and you're not willing to hear them out they're never going to hear you out like we can't expect that of each other if we're not treating each other respectfully um, I've been thinking about this for quite some time now. I didn't quite think it was the right time, but I think now is the right time. Like we've got to call each other out when we're not, we're not being respectful to each other. And it doesn't matter what the intent of the person is. Like somebody's got to call in the moment. We have to call each other out because we need to get past this and work toward what is best for our community in the long run. We can't keep nitpicking each other we've got to come and by the way everyone here you guys are all like really good people i know you i know you enough to know that you're all really good people um and we need to be respectful of that and of each other and the commitment that happens you know you guys spend a lot of time together um we spend a lot of time with you those of us who join meetings regularly um we know we're all really good people. So let's start acting like it, right? Let's behave the way we know we all are and, and be willing to put ourselves in that other perspective. Like, you know, Mike, I certainly do not share views with you. I have a hell of a lot of respect for you. And I can like say that for each one of you on the board. And I really hope that the same is true for each of you individually speaking for the others and putting yourselves in their shoes and trying to understand where they come from. So thanks for letting me stand on my soapbox. Thank you, Beth. Is there anyone else, Brian? I don't see anything else. A couple of comments in support of what Beth had said. Okay. Um, I believe the we had left it 
we were going to hold off on doing candidates or, or getting this prepared to send out for candidates until after we hear back from the trustees. Was that correct? Was that everyone's assumption? I don't think we exactly had a consensus on any one action, uh, but that might be the result if we can't reach a consensus. Okay, then uh, I'll open it up to the board members. What, what's your pref preference here? Pleasure. Do you want to continue working on this uh, uh, draft for committed candidate solicitation, or you want to wait for the trustees? I mean, I've, I've made my um, position known on that. I'm ready to go, but if other folks aren't, then then we don't go. Okay. I'd like to have, I'd like to not go because I'd like to have a uniform unified position from the trustees and the select board on what the mission statement is that they're evaluating the candidates based on. Kyle? Um, yes, and I wanted to continue working on the solicitation, continue tweaking it. And Mike, is he still with us? I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> it's not past my bedtime yet. I just, for some reason, your picture wasn't up anymore. Really? I can see myself. Well, maybe I don't see everybody. Maybe. It's kind of the cat's out of the bag with the village, wouldn't you think? They have obviously uh, put their solicitation for candidates out there, yes. And it went to a lot of people in the town, too. Some. Well, yeah, quite a few because they, the electric electricity goes out to a lot of places in the town. Um, it probably doesn't really make a whole lot of difference to me. You know, I, I think I would support that, but um, I, I don't know if we're, we'd be in the majority. So I guess we could go with Doug. Okay. <clears throat> Well, then we, if the board's ready, move on to the next item, which is accepting the resignation. All right. So we have received, um, move it up for sharing, but we had received <laughs> Brian Krause's resignation. Uh, Brian Krause uh, was very satisfied in the job. We'll do a proper exit interview with him, but uh, he's enjoyed working with the town. Things are going well, but uh, family situation is changing and he is moving out west. So he is resigning from the job um, at the end of October. So we're going to have to solicit for a new highway foreman. I've also received uh, Ray Gilcrest's formal resignation for his upcoming retirement. And that was the end of September, correct? Yeah, that is uh, September 30th is his official last day. Uh, he's probably gonna take a day or two of personal time uh, right at the end. So if the board recalls when we had gotten word that uh, Ray was going to be getting done this fall, our initial thoughts were not to immediately replace him because we didn't know how we were going to be sitting financially. Now, in light of uh, Brian's pending resignation as well, <clears throat> I asked Brian's story if he would run a couple of uh, scenarios for us with the replacements coming in, if we did decide to replace Ray and Brian at, uh, Krause at the same time, they'll be starting salaries uh, be significantly lower than the current employees. So we might still realize a savings um, and then we would be fully staffed as well. Be even though we're gonna be fully staffed, uh, the caveat there is we're gonna be having to train people. So 
um, we're going to have two new people in the mix. So if we went and hired and replaced both of them, if we only replace Brian, um, then we'll be still down one for the winter like we had originally planned. So it's open for discussion now on accepting their resignations and then uh, we can talk about what we would like to do going forward. And those are your numbers. You come up with. Yeah. Is that Mike? What's that? Did you say something? Yeah, it came through kind of uh, garbled or something, didn't it? Yes, what did you say? Yes. I said, I move we accept their resignations. Oh. OK, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Do we have any discussion? Let's put it this way. Resignation one, retirement second. One is resigning and one is retired. Yeah. Friend, friendly second. amendment. <clears throat> I'll accept. The second, okay, and the second accepts that. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So I'm guessing there's no discussion on uh, putting out a request for candidates for Brian Krause's position. The question before the board is, do we want to put out for both positions, Ray's, A and Brian's, or just go with replacing Brian? Go ahead, Mike. I can't, uh, did you figure out if uh, the, the new employee, other than the, uh, the public works, uh, supervisor, let's say they come in fully trained and they get moved right up uh, to one of the higher paid uh, outside workers. Did you run a scenario for that? Not specifically, but I can make the change on the fly pretty uh, uh, easily. <laughs> I had estimated our um, the new employee at $20, which is high but not like maxing out our uh, pay chart. Okay. So $20 an hour would be a, a, a highway operator with moderate experience. So basically your scenarios with or without replacing both of them and then having to use part timers and over, yeah. overtime. So we're not I, talking a lot of money between any scenarios. No, uh, the the assum the key assumption to this is that the amount of hours that Ray worked last winter are going to have to be made up somehow. Yeah. Whether that's uh, you know additional overtime hours that we're going to pay out, uh, and we're, in any scenario, I'm including that we're going to do some we're going to do more with our part time seasonal employees. Uh, employee. We only have one right now, even though I'm hoping to secure a second one. Um, and then the additional, uh, so it'll, it'll go to over, the total amount of hours will be unchanged and it'll go to either uh, overtime and part-time or uh, some combination thereof, some ratio. I did a 50-50 split and I did a 75-25 split. Um, Basically, the cost savings in not replacing the highway operator position are not about immediate cost savings. It's about what we would have to do next year if we received less state aid for highways. Uh, if the state adjusts its budget and we receive less money for highway maintenance, then we would be less flexible to ad adapt to that if we had replaced Ray now. But I think, uh, and I'd recommended against replacing Ray in the short term, and I think I'm changing my recommendation with Brian Krause's resignation. Um, 
that I, I think that the risk that we're facing for a decrease in state funding next year balanced against uh, helping our new foreman have a successful entry into the program. Um, yeah, I, I think I support replacing that position rather than leaving it vacant for now. Brian, scenario one, is that worst case if you had to hour for hour backfill Ray? Yes. Work, which realistically it would be something better than that because not every single day would we have to replace him and have somebody plow in the roads. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, that, that assumption is key for these that, you know, that we would go with an hour for hour replacement. Uh, there's not an easy way for me to estimate it any other way. Right. Uh, and with the policy of sending folks home when their work is finished, <clears throat> it's pretty, it's going to be pretty close to hour for hour. Uh, we're not going to save a lot on that, but Again, the cost savings on leaving the position vacant was never about realized this year. It was about realizing those in the future and leaving us more flexible in the future. Brian. Yes. I heard you, but I guess I didn't hear you because I had one of my earpieces was not quite pushed in. So what was your bottom line? Were you saying yes or no to replacing Ray? I would like to replace Ray at this point. Okay, I think that's, that that's what I thought. Will, okay. I think that we will uh, be setting, we'll have a better setup for Brian Krause's replacement if he's coming into a, uh, a, a shop with the additional man. Got it. Person. Person. Thank you, Nat. I move we put this out uh, for both positions. We have a motion on the floor. Put this out for both positions. Is there a second? I have a question. Oh, did, Doug, did, did you just second that, Doug? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay, we have a second. Go ahead, Nat. Uh, just, it looks like this is, these are straight hourly costs. This. This is not healthcare or, or other benefits. No. Okay. And uh, the healthcare benefits would bring scenario three up. Right. Um, so they would, okay. Yeah. So they would, you know, I would estimate it. It's hard to estimate because we pay yeah. uh, based on the plan they choose. Uh, but I would easily see that bringing up another, uh, you know, five thousand dollars, bringing it pretty close to in line with scenario one. Yeah, so it's six one half dozen the other in the short term. In the long term, it's about um, our prospects for for getting funding from the state. Yes, continued funding from the state, which seems uh, can uh, more and more unlikely every day. <clears throat> Anyone else? We would hate to have to let somebody like let somebody go, but it is uh, you know if, if we have to, that's the scenario that could be the, what we're left with. So how do you approach um replacing a position where the funding is, you know, suspect for the next fiscal year. The same way we would approach replacing any, any position effectively is, you know, that we will do our best to maintain secure employment for all of our employees and a stable work environment, but our money comes from the public. Uh, if the public is faced with a, a recession that they that's in, uh, insurmountable for them, we will be also. I like having the flexibility, uh, but it's 
Yeah, it, it's not an easy one for us to, to make the decision on. Um, and it, it would, it, I imagine it will be a less desirable position uh, when we're advertising for it now than it would be the last time we advertised for our position because we were, the whole world was in a better financial position then. Do you have any uh, thoughts on what kind of a pool of candidates we might get and if doing them both at the same time, we might get a candidate who maybe wouldn't really fill the uh, supervisor position, but could fill uh, you know, Ray's position. You think we're better by having two candidates? Oh, are slots open? I do like that. Uh, I I don't know if somebody applying for the foreman would take an operator position, but we do have a pretty young crew. Uh, they're taking all the trains, they're doing their professional development, they're doing a great job with that, but I would like to have uh, some experienced personnel in the shop as well. Uh, and that, that will be with Brian and Ray gone that will be a weakness that we have with our current crew is a relative lack of experience uh so yeah it's possible i don't know if the person would accept the position as an operator if they applied for foreman but i do like i do like that i'm hoping that we'll get you know some other applicants and maybe some people that are kind of on the cusp of being able to apply for one or the other and what's the uh, the environment out there? Are, you, are there a lot of openings or is there a few? There's more than I'd like to see for foreman right now. There's, there's uh, you know, a good half dozen foreman positions vacant right now. In the local area or statewide? Statewide. Yeah, okay. I did not cross check for uh, local. Um, not, I didn't do local specifically, but I did see, I did see a couple in Northern Vermont, but I'm not sure about how close it's nobody who's right nearby. Okay. Carl. Yeah, I, I'm just, yeah, taking in the information. Um, I'm I'm in support of this scenario. I, I, I are we have three options, but we really don't have a lot of options. <laughs> this is a this is a tough place to be in. Um, yeah. No, Brian, I, how I, quickly I, how quickly can we do this? Would we have be able to turn this around so we could have candidates in here in time to do a little especially with Brian, a little uh overlap? Uh, with Brian, I expect we can. With Ray, it's unlikely. Uh, so I'm sharing the posting that I want to make in the newspapers and a couple other areas. Well, actually, I'll edit it a little bit for the newspaper because we pay by the line there. Um, but this is for our operator. So this would be a replacement for Ray. Whoa. Sorry. Oh, is this in our packet, Brian? It is in your packet. Yeah. Oh, okay. And this is the one for the uh, public works supervisor slash highway foreman. Um, I did get a comment uh, about calling the position a foreman. We should use, most of the time, we should use the public works supervisor as the title that we had decided on earlier. Uh, but we still want to include the highway foreman because that is identified in some state statutes as a recognized position. So the position will have two titles, but we we should use the uh, supervisor uh, terminology for the most part. Um, so yeah, I am, I want to meet with, uh, uh, Jill Muir of VLCT, she handles their HR recommendations uh, to go through our um, 
our job description for this, make sure that it is clearly a uh, position that's exempt from uh, the union, you know, that it is a management position and not a union position. Um, and then uh, start soliciting for applications. And as this position would be continued as a salaried, and Brian Krause was the first uh, supervisor we had as a salaried employees, the board feel comfortable going forward with that? Mike? I think it might depend on what we have for applicants. Uh, if uh, Brian is saying that, uh, I think you said that they six Vacancies throughout the state? About six, yeah. We may have some candidates that might not want to work uh, as a foreman. Uh, I mean, not a foreman, but as a public works supervisor on salary. Uh, maybe a lot of them come from a job where they receive an hourly rate uh, with overtime, and they might be actually taking a pay cut uh, by coming here. So I, th I think it's going to depend on what we get for candidates, how we go forward with that. Well, if we're posting for a salary position, we're pretty much committed to it. That's true, but you might limit your, your candidates that way. Mm -hmm. Are you saying we should just take that out and leave it kind of open? Is there any way we can leave it negotiable? Uh, I would strong, I think we can, I can take out the salaried part and we can uh, determine the pay. Uh, but I do want to, I'll want to check with the, the HR support on that. Um, I feel very strongly that we do not want this to be a union position. Uh, I don't think that the salary determines that. Um, but I, I don't want to change anything that would make it a union eligible position if we okay you know, so, so basically if you, if you go hourly rate then you do become part of the union well you're you would no longer be fair labor standards exempt so right. but i don't know if that would just open you up for overtime and some of the other things that go with it but would still keep you closed from the union i i'm just i'm not sure on that well, I, I was a supervisor and I was not uh, salaried and I was hourly and I was union. So I'm sure that, that that's how it would be through the union. So we if we want to just go with what we've got, uh, th then I guess we can see what we're going to get with the leaving it the way it is with a salary. And then if we don't get any candidates, then we're going to have to do a change up. Doug? <clears throat> oh, I was thinking that the, the salaried position has, you know, I guess the advantage or disadvantage for us, it gives predictability in terms of, of the expenditures and, and what Brian is putting out as, as anticipated numbers. Whereas the, uh, uh, if it's hourly and overtime, you know, it's, it's you know, the, the numbers we've been looking at may not be anywhere uh, close. Yeah, absolutely right, Doug. And one of the reasons that we went from hourly to uh, salary for the supervisor position was when they were being paid hourly, there was no incentive there to send the employees home when the job was done because, you know, they're, they're lining everyone's pocket. And uh, we, the thought was from a previous board that if the, uh, if the supervisor's position is salaried, there's more incentive there for them to send home employees when the work is done. Well, that's and true, Eric. And then when we need to uh, get our contract negotiated because in most contracts, uh, management does say uh, overtime will be kept to a minimum. And so we have some clout as far as that goes. So 
Leave it at salary, see where it goes. Okay. Do we want to talk about salary range that we're expecting? Uh, you didn't have that included here, did you? Uh, I do actually have that. <clears throat> I don't think it made your packet, but I do have it here. Is this from the league's uh, study, salary study? It is. Okay. So the number we're really focused on <clears throat> is the number highlighted, the $58,774 annually. Okay. Is the uh, median income, uh, the median paid salary for all highway supervisor positions regardless of what title they, they officially get. Okay. And then um, our offer would be in that range depending upon experience. My recommendation would be uh, that we set the range at 55 to $65,000 depending on experience. Okay. That sounds good. That puts us firmly in the middle of the state on average, but gives us a little bit of room for, uh, you know, an upper limit if we get a really good candidate. What's our highest, you might not have this off the top of your head, but our highest take home pay for the highest paid um, public works worker at this time. I don't have that off the top of my head. It was around 55, wasn't it? It's around there. Um, I want to be sure there's incentive to be the supervisor instead of the... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's around there. I can double check on that and uh, have that for you before we make an offer. Yeah, okay. That sounds uh, Thanks. As I recall, though, I think it's around 55. That, that 55, sounds right 56. to me, but I, I really, I don't have the numbers in front of me, and I haven't looked at that in quite some time. Right. Uh, the last time we looked at that was, the last time I can remember looking at that was when we set the uh, pay, the new pay scale, which was a few years ago now. Well, actually, looking at this, why would we, if 63 is the highest, I, I don't know that we could justify offering 65, 65. Does that make sense? I would like to have, uh, let's see, there, there is higher. There's a 69. 70. Here's 70. Okay, thank you. Um, it does go higher and I'd like to have a little bit of flexibility on that. I don't see us going above 65, but. Exactly. Got it. I, you know, and uh, uh, do you have any of the? I mean, we I might make a recommendation that we revisit that limit. But, sure. Uh, do you have I any would, of the local supervisors, like in our county? I was not able to sort this for uh, by county yet, uh, but this is uh, removing the largest and smallest few communities and limiting it to uh, within 2000 of our population. See, so Stowe pays 74. Okay, go to Morrisville, Stowe, Hyde Park, Cambridge. Let's see. That's who we'd be competing with, really. Well, Stowe is about 74, Eric. Well, yeah, we, we won't compete with Stowe. I get it, yeah, but that's the only one I see in Lamar County. Yeah, I don't see uh, Hyde Park in the data set. Uh, or Morrisville. <laughs> it's pretty tiny to read. Uh, so it, it's, it is limited to who responded to the survey. Okay. Uh, so there are plenty of towns that don't respond to the survey so they don't get included in the data. 
Okay. That, I, I think that band gets us started. You know, the, the fifty-five to $65,000 a year gets us started and we can make adjustments. Um, I don't, it is not mentioned in our, in the, the draft I have of the position right now. And I would just assume leave it out and answer that question when people right. contact yeah. Yeah. us. Yeah, that's the best way to do that. Any more board thoughts, Doug, Kyle? No. No. All right. And uh, posting the other position. Do we have a motion on the floor or no? I believe we got a motion and a second for both positions. Oh, both positions. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, I think that's how I understood it. Yeah, then we're doing the discussion now. Yeah. Sorry. So the, the posting for the other position is up on your screen now. Um, and this is also in your packet. It does say the starting salary, um, you know, that we could start somebody as low as $17 an hour. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much going by that salary plan. That's our pay scale. That, that we built. Okay. <clears throat> and this honestly is, has very little uh, I think I fixed a typo and that's it. Um, but I see road foreman and not supervisor. So I'll have to fix that too. Um, but yeah, it's not as especially changed from the last time we posted for this. Okay, is the board prepared to vote? Yeah. No more Thanks. comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed? You ayes have it. You'll start posting these for a, probably we wouldn't have candidates by our next meeting, would we? I doubt we could have candidates. I doubt we could have. Uh... No, we wouldn't want to do that anyhow. That'd be a work session meeting if we got to interview people. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to work on this as fast as I can. I guess I would, I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, interview process. Um, that I'm anticipating making a paper cut. Uh, you know, I'd like to solicit for this, uh, for applications to be in, um, especially for the foreman position. I think we got to give them a couple weeks. So I'd like those really by the end of September. Um, yes. And then they could come before the board for our first October meeting. Uh, yeah. So if you want to see them, I should have them, I should have their resumes, <laughs> everything by the 28th of September. So that I can make I can do a paper cut and then I'd like to do first interviews with them also. Okay. Uh, I would appreciate if I had a board member who wanted to sit in with me, but uh, Mike does. Mike volunteering or Mike has I, a comment? I will. I'll sit in with you. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, it's kind of nice to have two people there because you can reflect a little bit. Yep. Um, and then I'll bring the board a slate of candidates to review more thoroughly. I mean, ideally you'd get it down to about three or four at the most for the board. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on each position. Yes. Yeah. That, that would, that's the ideal situation would be, you know, a solid three candidates for each. Yep. Yep. Okay. Question about posting the position and, and where, yep. uh, you know, in our discussions about, about social justice. Um, hiring practice is a good, good place to, is a good opportunity to really be aware of, of what we're doing and, and examine some of the things we're doing. 
I would suggest, you know, I know I, I, um, maybe thinking a little bit of outside of the box of the places where we do post. I'm looking at the Vermont Works for Women website right now. Um, and they have an area for, for employment opportunities. And I'm thinking that um, maybe by thinking a little bit uh, differently that we might be able to, um, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I think that's a good one. Um, where, where do you typically post, Brian? I typically, I post in, uh, the local roads runs a website for uh, people involved in road construction. Uh, and I post to that. I post to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, um, News and Citizen, and uh, I did seven days last time, and that was a little expensive, but that uh, I, I, that yielded a few applications. That, that has a lot of readership, seven days. I think it's worth it. Yeah. Um, I, you know, maybe consulting with, you know, one of the statewide experts on, on, on um, social justice issues, just uh, either talking about Yang or, or Susanna Davis um, and saying, do you have some ideas for us on, on, along these lines? I'm not feeling very articulate right now, but I know that my message is getting across. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand. I can reach out. Um, we've got real locally and, uh, yeah, the state agencies yeah. Yeah. Um, state, that yeah. we can reach out and see if they've got any insights on uh, job boards and things that are kind of non-traditional. Uh, I know a lot of the ones that we use like VLCT and uh, the state's local roads program mostly get seen by people already doing this kind of job. Uh, so reaching out and getting some applicants from other pools would would really benefit us. Yeah, still using the traditional channels as well because uh, yeah, that's a good resource. But thank you. Okay, we have anything else? I didn't have any additions, so I think. Uh, we're adjourned. Well, I'm going to plug uh, Friday afternoon. We're going to be hosting the uh, Working Communities Challenge discussion. On can, Zoom. Okay. That's uh, what, when did you say? Friday uh, at. Oh, okay. Friday. This should be. Pretty straightforward, but I've got the time wrong before, so now I'm worried I'm going to quote the wrong time to you again. Greg Friday, says, five o'clock. Greg says he uses Indeed for a uh, to post jobs, which I didn't know about, but looks like a good website. He said Facebook too. Yeah, we can try both of those. Um, so Working Communities Challenge, uh, it encompasses a good part of Lamoille County. Uh, so it's not just Johnson, but we are well represented on that uh, committee. Um, myself and uh, Casey have done a lot of work for writing that grant application. Uh, if we receive it, it will be uh, $300,000 given over three years. So it's $100,000 each year to run a program. The uh, goal that we're working, the, the plan that we're working on uh, would be kind of a organizer, a communicator for uh, helping connect uh, employees in transition. So it would, the, the goal would be trying to get people who are uh, new to the job market, have been out of the job market, um, that kind of thing of like they, they need assistance in, in applying for jobs and working with employees and employers to make those connections. You said 300,000? Yep. Wow. It, it's a big program. Uh, the goal is that we have, 
the, the, what they're looking for is to create system changes. So they, they want, they don't want small ideas. So uh, this is a program that would open up um, and try and change the way people are looking for work in Lamoille County and providing better support for folks that need, need a job. Um, and again, especially the, those people in transitional uh, periods of work. What what is the money used for exactly? Training? Um, that will go. the The money will mostly be used to pay for uh, the resources, but a large part of it will be to pay for an actual staff person whose job is to help people connect and get work. Cool. So they'll be collecting and managing. <laughs> applications from employers and what employers need and managing uh, employees who are applying for a job. If they need training, he'd help, uh, the person would help them connect with job training that they needed. If they needed, you know, certifications or something, it would help, the, the person would help them connect with what, the, what do they need to do to get their certification. Uh, but it would be a kind of clearinghouse for resources. Hmm. Okay. But we'll get into a great deal more about this on Friday. Uh, we do have a couple public comments. Okay. Well, let's uh, open I've it got up. Greg up first, and then I've got Jackie. Okay, Greg, you'll have to unmute yourself. <clears throat> yeah, I think we've got it here. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, the uh, that grant actually was... Uh, a bunch of us were working on and it was to bring up people that were in poverty and uh, try to help them uh, work their way up through so they could live a better life. I think that's kind of what you were saying, Brian, but yes. uh, workforce development, just kind of helping these folks out that, uh, you know, they just don't know how to get there. So a little guidance, I think, is what it was all about. Um, I wanted to let you guys know we're having a uh, a uh, fair food fest um, at the uh, Lamile County Field Days, um, the 25th, 6th, and 7th, similar to what the uh, um, they did at the fairgrounds in Essex, where you have a certain amount of people and everybody's respected the COVID uh, guidelines by the governor. Um, we'll be splitting the proceeds with the uh, fairgrounds uh, as they didn't raise any money this year. And uh, so we're kind of working in collaboration with that. Um, and if anybody wants to volunteer to help park cars or, you know, be a part of it, we sure would welcome it there. Uh, we'll be announcing it uh, soon. It hasn't hit the papers or anything yet, but uh, I thought I'd let you guys know so you didn't hear it somewhere else um, that the uh, little uh, um, misunderstanding with Kyle, I talked to Don. Um, Don thought she explained everything we were doing, uh, but things do change and uh, we're open to uh, any uh, time. Uh, of anybody. I put my cell phone number on if anybody wants to know or uh, if you want to create a time where we can bring everybody up to date. It's pretty much the same. Coffee shop, sober living, church, uh, new mother's program in the basement, uh, some programming uh, for uh, recovery in the basement, and then uh, the upstairs of the church will be a uh, uh, community center. We're going to put in a big screen and have audio and visual and uh, be a place for meetings and uh, we could pipe people in from all over the world. So it's going to be uh, pretty much up to date. Um, other than that, I, we don't have much to report. As far as Cheslev, there, I think they had a few financial issues or they lost three of their doctors and they lost their uh, well, what is he, general manager, or whatever he was. He was a top fellow there, Scott McCoy or McKay or whatever his name. So he, he left, and we haven't heard anything from him. I mean, it's still a possibility, but 
uh, they've kind of gone kind of gone dark on us. So, uh, but if anybody else has got anything, we're here. My cell phone's there, and uh, more than welcome to field any questions if that doesn't cover it. I guess that's it. And as far as the grant goes, Brian, we talked about whether we're going to have bandwidth to put that together. And, uh, you know, the only reason we would put it together is because we'd have a better chance next year, maybe if we apply this year. And uh, as far as where the money goes, I mean, that's up to the town of Johnson. And, uh, it's not a shoe-in for Jenna's promise. It's something that the board could decide what they want to do. And we're just trying to help the town. That's it. Um, on that specific grant. So sorry for any confusion, but thank you. Okay, thank you, Greg. Um, and you said Jackie wanted to speak? Yes. Okay, Jackie, you'll have to unmute yourself. Great. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Jackie. All right, great, yeah. So yeah, I have a, a procedural question uh, just about uh, protocol around email communications. Uh, what, what is customary and, and what a citizen uh, can expect uh, from this board? And, and I'll be asking the, the same question to the village board. Uh, in, in my personal life and, and in my professional life, when I receive an email, um, I respond or acknowledge it in some way, even if it's a short, got it, thanks, whatever. And um, I noticed in the chat, Margo Warden had said something like, oh, um, is the board familiar with the work of the Hardwick community and select board? And uh, nobody responded to that. And, um, you know, as you know, uh, about two weeks ago, I sent, um, I just real quick, I forwarded a um, couple of documents that I thought would be really useful um, from Hardwick regarding their equity resolution and their formation of an equity committee. And I sent it to both managers, uh, Brian and Meredith, and both chairs, um, Eric and Gordy. So I, I never got any response back. And then as time went on, um, I thought, geez, I wonder if they're sharing this with the board members. So I forwarded that message to the board members of, of both boards. And I did get a couple of responses, one from each. Um, but but that's all I got. And so I guess my question is, if a citizen, um, what, what can we expect? What, what's reasonable? Um, Beth, uh, you know, made a, a great speech about respect and, and thank you, Beth. I, I, I really, I really enjoyed um, everything that you said. And um, so if I'm, you know, it feels a bit disrespectful not to get anything. And then when it's brought up in the chat, no, there's nothing. So I'm not talking about, I'm not asking us to rehash that Hardwick stuff right now, but I'm asking what, what's reasonable to expect and, and how come? Um, and, and, and do the board managers and chairs, do they customarily share things with their boards? And, you know, you, you hear what I'm saying. Can, can, can some or all of you respond to that? Uh, I can open up for the way I handle uh, emails that are coming in. If there's a, uh, a direct response required uh, from who's ever sending the email asking a question or something of that nature, uh, I definitely will respond. Um, depending on what the content is uh, and who's already on copy and whether I would forward it out to the full board or not. So that's just a general so in, this, in this case, you, you had you and, and Brian had obviously decided not to forward it out to the general board. And why would that be? I don't know. I didn't even uh, probably pay attention to who it was sent to. Uh, if I saw Brian on it and, and I, myself, I, I, I probably didn't check, see if there was other board members. Board members, do you have any response? I received it. Right, after I sent it to you, right. Uh, but would it be okay? I mean, is there, do, do you all um, respond or just say, hey, got it, or acknowledge, or what can I expect, just so I know for the future? If there's an email I get that has a, a question in it or asks something of me specifically, then um, I, geez, to the best of my knowledge, I, I respond to every one of them. Um, I do get dozens of emails that are informational along the lines of, Hey, check this out. Um, 
that I, I don't reply to. And I, I, I don't know that that's, um, in a lot of cases that would really seem out of place actually. So I, I, I just. What I did. Go ahead. Hey Doug, I'll, I'll respond after you. Okay, what I did is I received it, I set up a file, I put it in my, I, I evaluated it, I considered it, and I, I set it in my racial justice fo file folder as, as uh, information pertinent to that. I did not respond, I treated it as information to me. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, I, I, yeah, I'm, re I'm recalling that we've had this conversation in the past because there have been others that have been frustrated with response time or lack of response to emails. So um, Jackie, I don't think you're the first one to bring this up, unfortunately, and I'm, I'm sorry that was your experience. Um, because I think that, you know, public input is very valuable. And um, if you've taken the time to send us some research, something, send us something, we should take the time to, to, to respond, especially, and, and get, get it sent out to the board. Because I personally found that document super helpful um, when I was thinking about, about uh, our work here tonight. And <clears throat> I would have, if had we gotten it a week earlier, the first time you sent it, it sounds like um, that would have been very, you know, that would have uh, in, given me more time to digest and and um, and uh, help my thought process. So I think, um, I, yeah, this has been brought up before. I think we really need to be. Um, I think we need to be better. We need to be better. Bottom line. Thanks. Do we have anyone else, Brian? No, I don't see anyone else. Okay. Unless anybody's got anything further, I would say we stand adjourned. Thank you all. Good night, everybody.